Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with another Minx Monday Q&A, and before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the Demi Ben print. Uh, and also, I wanna let you guys know that the next couple of videos that you see are actually pre-filmed, because when you see them, I will be on vacation. <laughs> but I can't let my people down, uh, so uh, that's why I wanted to pre-film them. Okay, so let's get started with the very first question, shall we? Uh, Rachel Z, just wondering, which bags do you normally carry when you're on vacation? Also, how many bags do you normally bring with you? Um, well, the bags that I normally carry when I'm on vacation are really small, compact bags, uh, something that's really easy to transition from day to night. Uh, for example, the uh, Louis Vuitton Eva Clutch is great. The Louis Vuitton Favorite would be fantastic. One of my personal favorites is the Chanel Wallet on Chain. During the day, I use it crossbody, and then uh, at nighttime, I could just use it as a really cute clutch. And um, how many bags do I normally bring with me? I usually bring a maximum of two. I don't like to carry too many bags with me, especially if I'm traveling overseas. I already have, you know, an idea of a wish list in my head and what I want to bring back. So I want to, I want to make sure I have enough room for everything that I want to bring back. But if I'm traveling within the states. Same thing. I don't want to take up too much space, especially because I don't know about you guys, but I'm the type of person that overpacks with clothing just because you never know. What if, you know, <laughs> knowing my luck, I would end up getting, I would end up taking the the clothes that I think is appropriate and then it'll start raining or snowing and I'll have shorts and t-shirts with me, you know, the entire time or something like that. But, um, I'm, I always tend to overpack clothing, so I don't really have too much space for, for bags, especially bigger bags. I, bigger bags drive me crazy on vacation. That's just my preference anyways. Uh, but yeah, a maximum of two is all I, uh, is all I really, uh, deal with. Uh, okay. Scent lover, any issues getting the credit cards out of the Louis Vuitton zippy? Uh, I'm guessing the Zippy Coin Purse. Another YouTuber mentioned this. Thanks. I actually had this question uh, a few times last week. And uh, here I have my my uh, multicolor Zippy Coin Purse. Hopefully this is the item that you were, that you were talking about. I actually have this in the Damia Ben print. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. When you first get this piece, it is... I mean, it is a very, very stiff item. I mean, the, the credit card slots are very, very stiff. It's very hard to pull out your ID or something like that. But over time, the more and more you use this, it'll start to kind of uh, loosen up the credit card slots. And it's actually a breeze to be able to use. Obviously, I'm, I'm opening it up without a problem. I have in the past doubled up the credit cards in the slots here. And uh, I don't think it's loosened them up too much to the point where it's, um, you know, un undesirable, if you will. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Like I said, you can double them up and you can loosen up the credit card slots that way, or you can just use a little bit more and it's super, super easy to get in and out of. Uh, but again, in the beginning I was just like, there is no way I, I will be able to get in and out of this, this wallet with ease, but yeah, over time, it's been absolutely wonderful to be able to use. And I've had no issues since then. Uh, okay. Next question. Sue Ellen Walters. First, is there any way to preserve the new look, uh, the new leather look and prevent the patina on the monogram LV bags? Also, do you have any thoughts on chains sold on eBay that can be used on Louis Vuitton bags? If you like them, could you please recommend a seller and style? Okay. Is there any way to preserve the new leather look? Uh, yes. Yeah, some people end up, uh, scotch guarding, uh, their, their, their Louis Vuittons. Um, uh, there's also a few other, oh, what is the, what is that? There's a company that has, um, oh, what is it? I can't, it's at the tip of my tongue. Uh, but there's something that you can put like a coating on it and it just pretty much freezes the leather the way that you want it. Uh, if I can remember, I will put it in the description box below, but if any of you guys remember, let us know in the comment section down below as well. And, uh, also, do you have any thoughts on chains sold on eBay? Yes. Okay. So I think it was maybe three years ago. I was watching another YouTuber. Uh, her name is the life of an angel. Uh, and she had purchased some of those chains from eBay and the seller is, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the name is K craft. Uh, and I actually bought two of them because I wanted to use them on my mini pochette and my pochette accessoire. So let me just bring them out so I can show them to you guys. <clears throat> I don't remember. I cannot remember the style, the style number to save my life. I think 
it was, I bought 17 and 19 maybe, <laughs> but K-Craft, uh, K uh, slash craft. And then I'll put that on the description box below as well. And here's one of them. It's a very long chain. It's the gold hardware. It has that really pretty um, kind of, uh, you know, shine that the Louis Vuitton ones have. And then that's what they look like. So it looks exactly like the clasps on, um, you know, on the Eva Clutch, even on this Neverfull. It has the same type of little clasp there. And then this is the other one. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you can tell, I sound super nasally. Okay, and here's the other one. Let me bring it up close. So there's one and there's the other. So this looks like the mini pochette uh, chain. And this one, I don't think this remind. I don't think this is similar to any other Louis Vuitton chain. I could be wrong, uh, but I really liked it. And um, there's the, there's the little things on there. And I think they're the same size if I'm not mistaken. Well, maybe not. So the one that looks like the Louis Vuitton one is actually a little bit shorter. It's about an inch shorter than the other one. And uh, I was really crazy about these when I first got them. I was really excited. However, I started to notice that the chain itself is really, really sturdy. It's a very uh, nice, uh, what's it called, uh, type of material. But these are really flimsy. They're a little bit flimsier than I would like. And uh, I think I was using my pochette accessoire with it crossbody. Uh, and I really like how they, they land on my body frame. It's like the perfect, the perfect height for, for me. And remember, I'm five foot five. Uh, but I remember this started rubbing up on the hardware a little bit much. And I think it's because it's not as polished as a Louis Vuitton uh, chain would be that it started to, it didn't show wear, but it just kept scraping and I, I could see like the, so if you get like the, what's it called? Oh my goodness. I'm having the hardest time thinking right now. Uh, the hairline scratches on hardware. I felt like this kind of made it a little bit more noticeable if that makes any sense. So these are a little bit flimsier than the, than the chain itself. The chain seems pretty sturdy, but these are incredibly lightweight. It seriously, it feels like I'm like I'm holding nothing. And, uh, after that happened, I started to kind of look at it a little bit closer in detail. And I was so worried that this might end up slipping off and then I might end up losing my push accessoire. So I wasn't too crazy about the security that, th that this gave me because it was so, it was a little flimsier than I would like, you know what I mean? So I stopped using them and I've kept them for, uh, I don't know why, but I've kept them and uh, maybe I'll end up using them on a smaller item, maybe like a mini pochette if I wanted to wear that crossbody. But as far as a bigger bag, it would just make me a little bit nervous because what if, what if these kind of pop off and then my bag just falls if I'm in a crowd or something like that, I would freak out. Uh, so I'd rather have something that, you know, that's maybe a little bit smaller and won't maybe be too heavy for the chain for the little thing right here, if that makes any sense. But here they are. And again, I will make sure I put them on the description box below, uh, the name of the seller, but it's been ages since I bought anything on, uh, eBay. So I don't know if they're still around, but yes, I do remember them. Uh, okay. Sophie Hutchins, what is your opinion on the popular Dior Ever bag? Uh, okay. So the Dior Ever bag, um, there's three different sizes and it ranges from 2950 to 3,900, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, I'm very intrigued by it. I absolutely, absolutely love the leather on it. Um, it just reminds me of a Kelly. I don't know if that's just me, but it, it kind of looks like a Kelly bag to me. Uh, there's certain, obviously there's certain styles uh, or certain ways of how it, how it opens up. And there's just a certain, I don't know, there's something that was just like, oh, it reminds me of a Kelly, but I am very, very intrigued by it. I haven't seen it personally. I'm dying to see it personally. And hopefully uh, within this next uh, week or week and a half, I will be going um, to look at a few other designers to see if you know, my eye wanders to a different brand. <laughs> and a lot of people have been recommending Dior to me. So I'm, I'm, again, I'm very, very excited to check out this bag. But personally, I haven't seen it, but the leather looks absolutely fabulous. Uh, okay, uh, Deb New, question. I bought my first boutique Chanel piece, card holder caviar leather. I really wanted a key holder, but the sales associate said they haven't made them in ages. I went onto the Chanel app after after and there it is in all its glory. I'm confused. It really dampened my experience and I feel I bought the wrong thing. I'm a little upset and my Chanel is just sitting in its bag on the table. 
That's a lot of money, but if I had the right piece, I would be over the moon. Help. Uh, I can completely understand what you're talking about. I feel that sometimes, uh, especially this community that we have here, I feel that when we go into Louis Vuitton, when we go into Chanel, I feel that sometimes we know a little bit more about the product or we know a little bit more about, uh, about what's going on with price increases or with uh, items being discontinued. Uh, at least that's the impression that I get because sometimes when I go into the boutique, they're like, Oh, I've never heard of that. You know? And meanwhile, we've been talking about it on the Lux community for ages, uh, or on the purse forums and stuff like that. And, you know, if you had the chance, I would return it. Uh, but if it's too late, maybe they'd be able to exchange it. But, you know, I, Again, this goes back to the whole thing about how some sales associates will just try to sell you something and not really listen to what it is that the, that the buyer really, really wants. You know what I mean? And, um, it's really hard because sometimes I've been there before. Sometimes they make it so hard to, to say no to a piece because you've been there or like sometimes you feel that you have wasted their time if you're in the boutique for too long, but always go with what you, with your gut instinct, always keep your eyes on the prize. And, uh, you know, uh, case in point, the item is just going to sit there, but it is an absolutely lovely piece. Um, and I'm not too big on the Chanel, uh, key holder itself because of how it'll wear over time with the soft leather inside. So I love the, the card holder and I think it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Uh, but I understand your, your frustration and really the disappointment that you get from when you go into a boutique that the sales associate wouldn't try to lure, uh, lure you into, did I say that right? Yeah. Lure you into getting something that you didn't want, you know, but if you have the chance to try to return it or exchange it. Um, but, uh, I would definitely go for the piece that you absolutely want. That's what your heart wants. That's what your heart's telling you. Then I would go for it. Um, yes, but I completely understand. And okay, 408 California 408. A while back, you said that your Neverfull MM in Azure was your number one most used and favorite bag. Do you still feel the same? I am probably going to be getting this exact bag next month and wanted to see if you still feel the same about it. It's not uh, the the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in Demi Azure is not my favorite bag of all time, but it is definitely my favorite print for the Neverfull. Uh, and as you can see, it is starting. It it's pretty. Dark dark up here at the top, but it still has this beautiful honey patina. And I always get asked if I put anything on my bags. I don't, uh, if my bag gets a stain on the leather, if it gets a, a water stain or, or a watermark or something like that, I just feel that it adds character to the bag and I'm okay with that because it kind of tells the story. Uh, but I still love this bag. Uh, I didn't use it too much last year. Uh, I think it's probably because <laughs> I went on, I went a little crazy buying handbags last, uh, last year, but it's still one of my all time favorite spring and summer bags. And honestly, I am telling you the honest truth. I treat this bag as if it were my Demi Ben piece. Um, I, I am not careful with it. I don't, worry about what I'm wearing. Uh, sometimes I'll throw it on my back seat and my hubby will look at me. He's just like, really, you're just going to throw the bag. And I'm just, I thoroughly enjoy using this bag because I don't have to baby it. And I know that's not necessarily the case when it comes to Azure pieces because of the color transfer that you get, but I think it is a fabulous bag. I absolutely love it, especially, you know, you're all, you know, tan from the summertime or, or what, or whatever it is. And I just think it makes any outfit like pop for the summer. That's just my opinion, especially if I'm wearing colors when, when I'm not wearing black, of course. <laughs> uh, but I really, really like it. And I haven't had any issues. As you can see, there's no color transfer. It is absolutely well, in my opinion, I think it's super dirty on the inside. You guys might not think so, but I think so. Uh, but regardless, I think it's a great bag. And if you go for it, you will, I mean, you will love it. I know I love it. It's my favorite, favorite, never full. Uh, even though I do like the Ben and I do like the monogram to me, the never full MM and Azor takes the cake. Um, uh, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Lynn Estacio how can I make a reservation for upcoming Chanel new releases? Do I need to call the store and make an advance payment or do I need to go to the branch? Is it per, is it per come per serve basis or do I need 
to have an essay friend to call me for availability. Uh, the best thing to do when it comes to new uh, new pieces or new releases from Chanel is definitely to be in the system uh, with a certain boutique uh, or just the with Chanel in general. Uh, if you have their information, it's a little bit easier to be able to ship you the item. Uh, but first and foremost, it has to be having a great relationship with a sales associate. A sales associate is just the same as Louis Vuitton. They'll keep you in the know. They'll be able to text you pictures of new items. And uh, that's the best relationship that you can have to be able to get new items and to be able to get on the list uh, or something to that effect. And um, I, I know I've had great success with my sales associates at Chanel. They're absolutely fabulous. I love them all, even though I had a little bit of a bump, a speed bump with one of them. Uh, but they're all absolutely fabulous. And uh, they definitely take care of me. So having a great relationship with a sales associate is by far the best way to be able to find out any new news, new items, new releases, what have you on Chanel pieces. Uh, okay. Nicholas Humphrey in your QA with your hubby, you said that you do fire drills in your room. <laughs> Could you please explain a little more? I'm very interested. <laughs> okay. So for those of you that don't know, um, I did a, a Q and A with my hubby and I talked about how I like to do fire drills, uh, in the house. And I don't know if it's, if it's something from my childhood or what it is, nothing ever. I mean, it wasn't like I was scarred by something, uh, but I, I think safety is incredibly important. And, um, we always do fire drills in the house. It's going to sound silly. Some people might think it's absolutely ludicrous, but it makes, it gives me peace of mind. Uh, so we'll always have a fire drill as far as, uh, it sounds so funny. Uh, we'll have, you know, what's the easiest way to get out of the house. And it's a great way for us to be able to train Edward as well, uh, in case there's a fire. And obviously if there's a fire, if there's an earthquake, if there's some kind of, uh, natural disaster or not natural disaster, but if there's a fire, if there's an earthquake or something like that, um, it's, you're, you can never be prepared, right? I mean, we can have fire drills until we're blue in the face, but when it comes down to it, I don't think anyone's ever prepared for, for it when it really, really happens. But still, I like to know that I, we have a little bit of a system, uh, and doing the fire drills trains Edward because he is a big dog. And if we're trying to run out of the house with something, I can't, I know I can't carry him, uh, out of the house if we need to. So it kind of, it kind of helps us. And, um, I don't know if you guys did the same thing, but when I was in elementary school, I remember that at the beginning of the school year, they had like this emergency earthquake kit that the teachers would have. And you had like certain things. So if there was a natural disaster, if there was a fire, if there was something like that, uh, that that's the first thing that they'd roll out. Uh, so we have a kit. It's not right by the door, but it's somewhere where we can grab it really quickly. So it has supplies in there. It has batteries and we always keep it up to date every, uh, every single year. And uh, again, it's just peace of mind for me. Again, it might, it might sound silly, but I, I like doing it. And, um, I have done it in my room <laughs> to see what I can grab. But honestly, when it comes to a fire, when it comes to an earthquake or something like that, the, the most important thing to me is my family. These can all be replaced. Some of them can't be, but I mean, it's all material items and that's not what's important to me. You know what I mean? Uh, but I have, <laughs> I think what you're referring to is the fact that I have done a drill to see how fast or what items I can get in my room and out the door. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is, um, <laughs> there is a, um, there was one time when I was able to grab literally almost every single bag and I just stuffed them. I put bags within bags and then I have a box of heirloom, um, uh, jewelry pieces that is very, very near and dear to my heart that also has a few other, uh, items in there that I would just be devastated if something happened and I'm able to grab those. So I, I'm telling you, yo girl can grab as much as she can and get out. So I don't know if you guys remember that show supermarket sweep. Yeah. I'd be really good at that show. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just, a you know, it's just a way to be able to to make sure that I can get the stuff out. I don't know. I went on a tangent out on that. I'm sorry. I probably talked about it for like five, 10 minutes. Uh, but yeah, that's just what we do. And, um, I don't know, just again, the peace of mind. <laughs> I'm just a little crazy. What can I say? Uh, okay. Pally one, two, one, two, four, zero, two, three. If you were able to design a bag for Louis Vuitton, what would it look like? What leathers would you use? Etc. Um, 
I don't know exactly what it would look like. I can tell you it would be a very classic piece. It wouldn't be something completely outrageous. Uh, I would probably end up using the leather, the capucine leather, and I would want it to have a friendlier price tag, definitely. Um, I would want it to have more of a vintage feel to it. It wouldn't have a crossbody strap. I know, I know, but you guys know me. I'm not a big fan of crossbody straps. Um, but it would be, it would be that beautiful leather. It would be price friendly. <laughs> um, and what else? It just that vintage look to it. It would have a nice classic silhouette with the structure, not to the point where it's too structured like a briefcase, but it would still be structured enough to where it won't slouch and it'll look beautiful 20, 30 years down the road. That's what I would do. <laughs> um, but I don't, I don't really know the specifics on it, but it would have gold hardware as well. Uh, okay. Go, go turtle 157. That's a cool name. Uh, I was planning on getting an, a never full later this year, but the artsy looks like it's a good size that would fit what I need. Could you touch on some positives? Okay, so I brought it out. <clears throat> so we have lots of eye candy. So here is my Artsy MM and the monogram print and then compared to the Neverfull. Okay, so when it comes to the Neverfull, obviously it's just an open tote, very easy to carry, uh, very great for uh, casual settings and a no fuss bag. The Artsy is fabulous. Um, it does have that north south uh, feature to it. so. It makes a little a little harder, not harder, but um, sometimes your items can get jumbled in there because it has such a large bottom. Um, the handle, some people say it's uncomfortable. I think it's very comfortable because it has the cork inside. Uh, and I really like the silhouette. When you first get this, there is a little bit of a break-in period because this will start to kind of hit right underneath your arm. Um, so that, you know, over time it'll start to slouch a little bit. This is a little bit slouchier. I feel that the Neverfull, whether it's full or whether it's, um, empty, it holds its shape a little bit better. Uh, at least mine do anyways. I don't know about you guys, but mine stays perfectly upright. This one tends to lose its shape big time. So you guys know how I feel about the slouchiness of handbags. Uh, but honestly, um, I do love the artsy. I'm not a fan of the price tag because it's pretty much all, mostly all uh, canvas you have a little bit of leather and then you have the microfiber interior. Uh, and this one is definitely the mostly canvas as well. It has a little bit, maybe the same amount of leather if you were to combine them. Uh, but uh, this is just no fuss. And as much as I love the artsy, as beautiful as it is to me, a Neverfull is just fantastic. It's a perfect bag for everyday casual wear. I don't have to worry about it. And this one, it, you know, and that's another thing. I'm able to open this up and see everything at a glance. I love that. You can add purse organizers to this. I don't know if there's a purse organizer for the artsy, but, um, you know, it's, it is a beautiful bag. I, I will say, I have said it before and I'll say it again. It's a great, great bag. Uh, but some, some people might be turned off by the opening, but I would definitely have to go for the Neverfull. If it was between the, between the two, if I had to do it all over again, I would still choose my Neverfulls over the artsy and then get the artsy later on. That's just my personal opinion, but hopefully I was able to help. Uh, okay. And last question, Sally H. How do you feel about other YouTubers doing Q and A videos? They are copying. Where's the originality? Well, the way that I feel about, uh, Q and A videos, I think that when it comes to a big purchase, whether it's a luxury good or whatever, whatever it is, I feel that the more opinions that someone has, the better. Uh, because what if I like, you know, you guys know that I don't like crossbody bags and let's say there's another YouTuber that absolutely loves crossbody bags and they'll be able to give you uh, a little bit more feedback on how they use their crossbody. So, you know, um, I think that the more opinions you have, the more, uh, information that you have, it's always, always better. I know that I'm the type of person that if I'm purchasing a bag, um, if I already have an idea as to what I want to get, even when I'm at the boutique, I will ask my hubby. I will ask the sales associate. If there's another sales associate, I will ask her just because I want to get as much feedback as I can. I think the money that we spend on these luxury goods is so much that we want to make sure that we get all, you know, all of the information. What if I, what if I talk about something, um, or what if I don't talk about something that, that is very important to you. And then when you get the piece, you're just kind of like, Oh man, I didn't know that this and this happens, you know? So if you have 
all these all these beautiful these wonderful youtubers that are doing q a videos i absolutely love it because again it's just that much more information that you can have um that way when you when you go to make your purchase you have a better idea of what to expect uh you know and i wish that in the beginning before YouTube and before all the Q&A videos, I think I would have made a lot of better investments uh, in the long run had I, you know, had I been able to go onto YouTube and check out other U uh, other Q&A videos and see, you know, what what they thought about the item or what they thought about this piece and things like that. But I think it's awesome. Again, the more information you have, the better. Uh, at least that's how I feel anyways. I'm, I'm constantly asking, how does this look? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I'm that, I'm that person, <laughs> you know? So, uh, I can give you a tad about the interior and then another YouTuber such as Leo Lion, uh, Lion, oh my goodness, Leo Lion LV. She'll give you, uh, maybe some tips on the outside and that way you have, a full idea of what to expect on the bag. Uh, but yeah, that's just how I feel. And I think it's awesome. So hopefully, um, we're able to help the our, you know, our YouTube community is able to help out the Lux community on purchasing more goods or better goods for, for what you need. All right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday. Again, I cut a little short because this throat is not, <laughs> it's so itchy. I feel like I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to start coughing. And the last thing I want to do is cough on camera. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for all the wonderful questions. I will make sure and link, uh, or not link, but put the information of the K craft on there. And hopefully I was able to go into detail about some of these items. Uh, but yes, I will see you tomorrow with a, um, with a what's in my toiletry 25 or not a what's well like kind of what fits what i'm taking with me if that makes any sense <laughs> but anyways thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you tomorrow and as always make it a fabulous day or not the choice is yours have a great day you guys